Hello and thank you for tuning in to Millennium Movie. So we have some photos and a plot breakdown and some character descriptions for the brand new horror slasher LGBTQ plus centric uh, film titled They Slash Them. Now I'm very excited for this movie. I honestly didn't know much about it until just now but you know I think with the plot and the character descriptions and the, the unique premise we have going behind it and the nice you know sort of fresh spin on the horror slasher genre. I'm really excited and I think you should be as well. And let's go ahead and break down why I feel this way. So first off, Kevin Bacon making his return to Camp Grounds in a horror set, horror slasher setting since, you know, for the first time since the original on Friday the 13th, where he suffered one of the most gnarliest deaths I've ever seen in a movie, especially in that movie. Uh, that alone is enough to get me excited. Not to mention, like I said, you know, a, a very creative title and a very creative premise. Of course, they slash them, you know, sort of having a play on words, right? With both they, them being not only pronouns, but also the slash between they, them being short for short for slasher. So, you know, just brilliant stuff. And uh, again, Kevin Bacon's gonna be playing uh, this conversion camp director who runs Whistler Camp alongside several other counselors you can see behind him here, including his wife, Cora, who is also a licensed uh, therapist in charge of the camp campers therapy sessions. And then there's also Molly, the camp's medic and newest employee who I'm not sure right now if she's uh, pictured behind here, but basically what's going on here is there's this uh, conversion camp, right? Where, you know, these sort of queer and trans campers are being brought into to sort of, you know, quote, help them find a new sense of freedom, end quote. And we know that this is such a crazy wild concept that really just means let's get these kids to act more straight. Let's get them to be more heterosexual, which is just completely dumb and just stupid and idiotic in every way, shape, form imaginable. But getting into the actual plot and why these characters are here, it's a very, it's a, it's a very unique and brilliant way to get these characters out from the city and into the middle of nowhere where they can be victims of this, uh, uh, whoever this villainous character is going to be, right? Whether it's a guy, girl, or, or just whoever they are, right? So the plot goes, as the camp's methods become increasingly more psychologically unsettling, the campers must work together to protect themselves when a mysterious killer starts claiming victims. Things get even more dangerous. So before we get into those uh, character descriptions for our uh, campers, right, our, our camp attendees, I want to say I, I, I don't think Kevin Bacon's going to be playing the villain here. He's probably sort of more of a red hearing where like, yes, he's an ant antagonistic character. He's going to be a messed up evil dude, but he's not going to be the actual killer, I don't think at least. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the potential uh, characters who are probably going to be meeting a very uh, grotesque and gruesome death, or one of them could even be our killer. First off, there is They Them Jordan, a transgender, non-binary camper from a religious background who has made a deal with their parents to legally emancipate if attending Whistler doesn't quote-unquote work. Then there's She Her plays uh, who. Uh, then there's She Her Alexandra, a transgender woman whose parents have threatened to kick her out of the house if she didn't attend the camp. Then there's a He Him. Toby, a gay camper who negotiated with his parents for a trip to New York in exchange for a week at Whistler Camp. Then there's a she-her who is Veronica, a bisexual camper who wants to stop fighting who she really is. Then there's Kim, who's she-her, a closeted lesbian camper who puts on a perfectly crafted front for her family and friends, assuming that when she finally fits in, she'll be loved. Then there's Stu, he-him, a jock with aspirations of a swim scholarship and joining his father's fraternity things he doesn't feel he can achieve if he's open about being gay. Then finally, there's Gabriel, he, him, a sensitive gay camper, tired of the persistent name calling and bullying he's endured his entire life. That sounds like such a sweetheart, right? Such a sweet character who, you know, should be like the final boy in this movie, sort of a spin on the final girl, right? In this type of film, right, where we have an LGBTQ plus centric cast, that could be a fun split, that could be a fun twist on the, you know, you know, the original, um, you know, sort of our expectations of the sub, of, of the sub genre, right? So, hey, um, he's probably going to meet a gr gruesome death at the hands of the, the killer here, this poor Gabriel character. But, you know, I think that's okay, right? Because I think when you have an Oscar nominated screenwriter and John Logan behind the pen here, I think that this is an opportunity to not only celebrate queerness and, and bring a level of sensitivity and authenticness and realness to these types of people who typically don't see themselves represented on screen, not only as just side characters, but as the entire, you know, ensemble cast. That's that's kind of unprecedented, right? We're starting to see Netflix 
do this more with these brand new series and brand new movies where they're putting a lot of attention on these types of characters, which is a really good thing to see. But in the horror genre specifically, it's 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 kind of more of a rare thing. But we're starting to see this more and more often lately. You know, think of like, you know, uh, some of the Scream movies. Think of like X, right? So we're starting to see these characters with this sort of more... Um, you know, uh, uh, there's more layers to these types of people. And I think that you need to uh, not only do them justice in a way where they just, you know, they get their chance to shine and get to be the heroes that people want to see these types of characters be. And these types of people want to see these characters who represent themselves. They want to see them portrayed as heroes. And we'll probably get a cool final girl or final uh, final boy character or final they them character in this movie, hopefully. But also we can potentially have a really you know, interesting and complex uh, villain character, whoever they whoever they are and whatever their motives are, whether their motives are relating to the injustices that these characters sort of face on a daily and yearly basis, right? So a lot of interesting places they can take this movie. But also I think uh, when you consider at the root of this, this is a, again, a, a horror slasher film. So I think at the same time, you don't want to pull your punches, right? You don't want to like go uh, clean on the, on, the, on the gore and the kills. Like, no, because then you'd be going the opposite way. And I don't think that they're going to do that here. I think that there's going to be a lot of bloody and gruesome and creative deaths here that we can all enjoy. And hopefully we can all talk about for years to come like we still do with uh, Kevin Bacon's death in Friday the 13th. So a lot of fun stuff here to look forward to. A lot of, lot, of, uh, lot of promise with this movie. A lot of potential. So I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you are too. Let me know what you're thinking in the comment section below because I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And uh, yeah, if you want to stay up to date on all, all the latest in the world of film and TV news, well, you're already in the right place and consider subscribing because I'd love to have you along for the ride when I break down this movie's uh, first trailer and eventually review it when it releases on Peacock August 5th. But until next time, this has been Millennium Movies and I will see you all very soon.